All right, let's go ahead and move on to uh, Las Vegas. This is very, very interesting stuff here. So let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen, which is that reporter Jeff German, he is a storied figure and at the Las Vegas Review Journal. He was killed at his house last week in a stabbing incident that really shocked the Las Vegas Review Journal and a lot of people in the area. German had done a lot of different series. He did one called Mobbed Up, which is a podcast series about the history of Las Vegas. I actually knew a lot about him because I read a lot of his stuff that concerned the uh, Las Vegas shooting. I was fascinated by that shooting. I still, there's a hell of a lot of questions yeah, around what absolutely. exactly happened on that day. And a lot like the FBI has ever given us any good uh, story. So long after the national press stopped reporting on this, he was one of those dogged people really digging into the details. He also was digging into Las Vegas Vegas politicians, and that is where it seems that this all leads back to. So, just this morning, Robert Tellis, who is the Clark County Public Administrator, was arrested on suspicion of murder in the stabbing of Jeff German at his house. The details of this are genuinely shocking. So, Robert Tellis, like I said, he's the Clark County Public Administrator, had been the subject of repeated investigations by Jeff Gurman. Gurman had actually published several reports about Telus's abusive environment. It caused Telus's own staffers to record him in the car that corroborated, you know, kind of his abusive behavior. Well, he was behavior. having an affair. That was he was having an affair. Car, yeah, was, yeah it was, uh, I didn't want to go too far. But uh, <laughs> hey, I'm scared of this guy now. He's a murderer, <laughs> allegedly. Anyway, got him so, in custody. Yeah, so we're yeah. safe. <laughs> Listen, we'll see. I mean, people like this are crazy. So yeah. what happened is is that he was having an affair, he had an abusive environment, his staff was turning on him, all of this was being leaked to Jeff Gurman. Gurman publishes all of his head of the election, actually tells, loses the election in large part due to all of this. Now, in this interim period, what's been happening is that Gurman has been FOIAing and requesting even more documents and text messages between Telus and others. Telus on Twitter and in public had been trashing Jeff Gurman, saying they had it out for him. Yeah. Well, now what happens is that Gurman is killed Police then search, let's put this on the screen, yesterday went ahead and searched Robert Tellis' residence. And at that residence, they towed away a red GMC Yukon, which matches the exact description that police had put out for the actual murderer, saying that the suspect who has, has, uh, drives a GMC Yukon between 2007 and 2014 with chrome handles, that's exactly the car mm-hmm. that they towed away from this guy. Uh, Tellis was in, uh, interrogated by investigators investigators at the scene uh, on his, at his house. Tellus refused to answer any questions and appeared very perturbed whenever he was going back into his uh, garage. And then uh, this morning we get the news, he was formally arrested on charge with murder uh, for murdering allegedly Jeff Gur- I mean, this, I don't even know how to describe. I mean, to have a reporter who did his job and exposed the wrongdoing of a public official and to then have that public official straight up, mur- not just kill, like he stabbed him to death. That is a, uh, uh, you know, that is. Deeply, deeply personal. Deeply what, I mean, personal, upfront yes. violence uh, that this person seems to have displayed against this man. I just think we should remember him for some of the great work that he did, not only on this, but his podcast series, the work on Stephen Paddock and that uh, that Las Vegas shooting. He was, you know, 60 something years old, uh, just a, fantastic career. I, I don't know. This, beyond the circumstance of being absolutely insane, it's very, very terrifying, you know, to have people, I mean, look, we're in this business. So a lot of people, you know, we talk a lot, a lot of politicians and more. Yeah. I don't think anybody ever imagined somebody's going to come up and strip, and, kill you at your house. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's exactly right. And when he was originally murdered, I mean, there were a lot of I, there were a, there was a lot of speculation about who could have done this because, yeah, he had gone after the mob in mm-hmm. Vegas. I mean, that's kind of what he was most famous for. He'd also done a lot of digging into that. Well, Las I'll, Vegas. I'll be honest. That's what I was. I was like, oh man, this guy poked the bear. The Las Vegas going, shooter. Yeah, which the Las Vegas you're right. Shooting. There yeah. still remain a lot yeah. of unanswered questions about who this guy was and and what exactly happened there. Why it took so long for the police to stop the shooting and all of those things. Um, he's taken. You know, he, this is not the only policy politician that he's gone after, of course, as well, exposing corruption. There's a lot of corruption in Las Vegas, and he was part of exposing that corruption, um, also exposing, like, extremist activity in southern Nevada. So there were a lot of potential uh, 
there were a lot of people out there who were not happy about having their ugly deeds and secrets exposed by an incredibly effective and dogged reporter. But um, when you started to look into this Telus dude, who apparently what this office that he does, what they handle is like people who die, like their estates, they're involved in like executing those mm -hmm. estates. And uh, this is a publicly elected position in uh, Las Vegas and in the state of Nevada. And um, you get the sense, yeah, there's a lot of these like toxic workplace allegations that are out there now, but you get the sense this one was super legit. Yeah, well, that these employees seems were like- Seems even more legit now. It, yeah. Yes, that these employees were legit afraid of this guy. Makes sense now. Um, and, you know, that they felt like the only recourse was to sort of like, you know, leak to this to, to the press. And then ultimately one of the former employees ends up running against him in the primary. That's who defeats him. He ends up these these revelations in the press were so damning that um, he didn't just lose to this person. He got third in the Democratic primary behind even someone who didn't even campaign. So clearly this was the deciding factor yep. in terms of his election. And then afterwards, um, as these stories are coming out and then after he loses re-election and all of these things, his response to German becomes increasingly unhinged in tweets. And then he posts this like totally unhinged public letter on his website, just right. railing against this reporting. And then as you said, I think apparently, allegedly, the final straw here was that German wasn't done, that there was more information he wanted to uncover. He filed these FOIA requests. He was still pursuing the story. And so, um, you know, the information we got is first the police released these two photos, one of a uh, uh, purported suspect who had a straw hat on, so you couldn't see their face and was like carrying a bag. Right. It definitely had like a body shape that could have been Telus. <laughs> and then um, this picture of this vehicle that then reporters are like, that That's looks like- That's your car. Telus's car. Yeah. Interesting. Somebody actually, some local reporter um, was able to ask him a few questions as he was walking into his house after they had um, seized the vehicle and searched his house. And of course, he refused to answer anything. Bizarrely, he was wearing like a white hazmat yeah, it was suit. Really odd. Yeah, really I weird. I was wondering the same thing. Like, like why he was, what the hell? He literally looked like he was in like a forensic investigator. It was weird. It, yeah. Anyway, so I guess now we know that this is this is the direction that the cops have gone in, and that they think that this man stabbed this reporter to death because he destroyed his political career by exposing, you know, the misdeeds of Telus. It is scary. It is, um, you know, it's it's just really, of course, your heart breaks for that community oh, and yeah. for his loved ones. And um, it's underscores what sort of dangerous and fraught times we live in right now, I yeah. guess I would say. Yeah. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.